In the Philippine jungle, the so-called roads are mostly just sort of tracks. Serious accidents happen all the time. But for the farmers of the fertile high plateau, the Hasama Highway is the only possible route to deliver their goods in the valley. Whoever drives here must forget about fear. The Hasima Highway is situated in the northern Philippines on the main island Luzon. The road is 166 kilometers long and runs through the high mountains up to an altitude of 3,000 meters. Albert Killy earns his living by driving a jeepney. He calls his passengers into his taxi by beeping the horn. Twice a day, Albert has a fixed tour. From Sagada, high up in the mountains down to the valley, it takes just short of an hour. Every tour is an adventure. Up here in the high mountains, there is frequent fog and heavy rainfall. We are used to these weather conditions. But it's very difficult for visitors to drive here. There's a lot of heavy rainfall and the fog is especially treacherous. Albert's jeepney is 20 years old and compared to local standards, relatively new. The vehicle is a replica of an American military truck. You'll find these jeepneys all across the Philippines. They are the main means of local transport. It's tiring if you have to drive every day. If you're lucky, you have a fast driver. But some of them drive so slowly, it's a time killer. The locals expect the driver to drive fast. Safety comes second. <laughs> you know, uh, but it was, it was fine. We were safe, so... <laughs> you shouldn't be afraid to get on these old vehicles. The locals earn very little money, and so the ride to the next town shouldn't cost more than a few cents. Albert's jeepney will be used until it falls apart. the bad weather disappears just as suddenly as it arrived. Compared to Philippine standards, the climate in the mountains is extraordinarily chilly. Temperatures only very seldom rise above 25 degrees. Whoever wants to escape from the heat spends his holidays in Sagada, where it's cooler. Dennis Bing Eel lives on the outskirts of Sagada. He's a bus driver. Before the journey begins, we have to check the tires, the screws, and the air pressure. You can tell by the sound whether they hold enough pressure. If you don't have a puncture, you're all set for the trip on the Halsama Highway. Dennis is responsible for 50 passengers. Before each trip, he services the bus, which includes checking the brake fluid, as the Halsema Highway is steep. You may run into an obstacle behind every curve. Dennis can tell just by hearing its sound whether the engine is running well. As long as the engine is looked after well enough and the tires are new, even an old car will manage the trip. 
The older your vehicle is, the more you need to look after it in order to safely make the journey on the highway. On this morning, jeepney driver Albert is bringing a few tourists up the mountains. Albert loves these extra tours. They are the icing on the cake for him. When I'm driving, I get to know different people and make new friends. I like that. It makes driving so much fun. And sometimes I'm lucky and someone hires me for a longer trip. The art student Rocky and his friends have taken their seats on the roof. They are heading for Kalinga, where a legendary tattoo artist lives. It's very painful, and afterwards your skin is very sensitive. You have to be very careful with your arm for a few months. Look, that's a unique design from this region. And what about you? Are you getting a tattoo? Kalinga is an isolated and remote village in the mountains. To get there, you must travel a track that branches off Hasema Highway for the last kilometers. Albert picks up a couple of students on his way. They are happy to get a ride. A few bends further up, Albert's jeepney comes to a halt. This is where the road ends. Bye bye. bye, bye. Rocky and his friends have to walk up the mountain the last few kilometers. Kalinga is a retreat for some of the Philippine Aboriginal natives. Their culture always has been rather warlike. The tattoos were supposed to deter enemies. Fang Od is 96 years old. Her legendary reputation as the oldest living tattoo artist reaches far beyond her home village. Yes, I'm in my 90s. I still tattoo because we need the money. Otherwise, we wouldn't have enough to eat. We don't have any paddy fields. I have no choice. If no one supports me, I will have to keep on tattooing. Fang Odd just needs a bamboo cane, a needle, and some coal. Back in the old days, you used to get a tattoo like this if you went to war. You'd get one if you killed someone too. That's how our ancestors did it. Tattoos were mainly connected to warfare. For Rocky, this is both a test of courage and a desire to closely experience the traditions. As long as there is no road leading up to Kalinga, this place will remain remote. So for another while, the traditions will be preserved. Back in Sagada, Dennis and his cross-country bus is already waiting for passengers. Every hour, the buses drive from Sagada all the way along the Hasema Highway to the city of Baguio, almost 150 kilometers away. It takes them seven to eight hours. Bus driver Dennis drives along the Hasema Highway every day. You know what? I like the Halsema. It's my home. For the inhabitants of the mountains, the bus is the cheapest way to cover greater distances, no matter whether they need to get to the nearest city or even to Manila.
Dennis has been working as a bus driver for 25 years. He never takes a break. Only if the bus breaks down would he take a day off. He only gets paid if he drives. The route leads from Sagada down to the river valley of the Chico River. From there, it leads on through the craggy mountains to Buguyas. In the meantime, the Halsema Highway has been asphalted in most parts. But up here, coming down from Sagada, the road still looks the same as decades ago. Narrow, bumpy, and dusty. There used to be hardly any hard shoulders. A trip to Baguio would often take more than 10 hours. Sandy is 21 and works as a bus conductor. He sells the tickets on the bus. A ride to Baguio costs 220 pesos, which is not even four euros. For most of the locals, it's half a day's wage. The bus slowly struggles down the road. There are an endless amount of roadworks on the way downhill. The construction workers need to watch out for the many buses and trucks. They are a permanent threat. There are hardly any machines in use at the road works. Whatever the mixer spits out will be spread out on the road surface by the workers' shovels. Hard physical labor. If we get tired, we slow down. But if we have good food, it means we're stronger. If we have proper food, for example beef, we're happy and strong enough to even carry bigger stones and build walls. <laughs> Whoever works here has to learn to make the most of it. Sometimes there'll be no cement for a whole day, which means sitting around all day and waiting. But as they say, somehow it always works out. The many roadworks on the Hasema Highway have been obstructing the traffic for many years now. The drivers have learned to be patient. They hope that one day there will be a paved road leading down the mountain. Untiringly, Dennis battles his way down the road every day anew. Back when the whole highway was like this, you used to have only one lane and it was damn slippery. Just one false move, one braking error. If you were at a dangerous spot, you'd fall down the canyon. During the rainy season, Typhoons and huge masses of water often lead to landslides and block the road. At the dangerous spots, the workers build supporting walls into the mountain to stop the slopes from sliding. In some places, the street is a construction site, a road, and the children's way to school, all at the same time. When Dennis has finally passed the last major roadworks with his bus, he arrives at a well-paved section of the Halsema Highway. Down in the valley, the road follows the course of the Chico River for a few kilometers. During the rainy season, it rises and turns into a torrent. It takes courage and intuition to master the bridge across the Chico. For years, it's been a patchwork bridge made of old logs and planks.
The same morning, Albert is driving his taxi along the Chico River too. He is driving a very special tour, young musicians and dancers. Albert is taking them from their high school to a performance at the district town of Bontac. If the jeepney is full, the remaining passengers have to sit on the roof. Bontoc lies at only 800 meters altitude. The temperatures down here are much higher and are favorable for the traditional cultivation of rice. But Bontoc is mainly a business and administration city, and so most of Albert's tours on the Halsema go there. The rest of the passengers had to get off at the outskirts of Bontoc. In the city, passengers are not allowed on the roof, but making music is always allowed. The traditional culture and the tribal rituals are still very much alive here. Every school often has various groups who perform dances on the city squares. The elders, which are called warriors, are our ancestors and models. Back then, everyone went out hunting for boars, deer, or water buffaloes. They were warriors and went out hunting in the mountains. After the tour is before the tour. Albert has four kids. His wife earns some extra money by running a little shop. But that is just about enough to sustain the family. I need to always be ready to drive. When I've reached my destination, I go looking for customers here in the city. I take a look around, talk to people. That's the best I can do. Maybe I find a few tourists, make some extra money. I only have to be prepared, then it'll work. And so, Albert has to try his luck on the Halsema Highway every day anew. The highway is named after its constructor, the American engineer Eusebius Halsema. It was first designed as a footpath in the 20s of the last century. For the people living here, the Halsema is a blessing and a curse at the same time. It helps develop the region, but also claims many lives. Up until today, it is considered to be one of the most dangerous roads in the world due to its bad condition. For Dennis and his passengers, the Halsema is a true challenge every single time. I think by now, I know every single turn on the Halsema. With the amount of time I spent driving it, the street has engraved itself into my memory. I know the slippery parts, the tricky slopes, and the sections where the rocks come down. Many horrible accidents have claimed lives here, and cars have fallen into the abyss. This section might be the worst. If you apply the brakes carelessly, you start skidding immediately. The passengers are aware of the dangers too. This section of the street has so many bends. Horrible. It's so high up, it scares me. I'm already exhausted, and it's better if I just keep my mouth shut. Everyone here has heard stories of horrible accidents. Pag-accident eh, 
There are many reasons why so many accidents happen. Most of them happen because of technical problems with the old cars. But the weather also plays a role. There's dense fog, rain, and worst of all, typhoons and landslides. That's the way things happen here on the Halsema. This road has claimed many lives. <laughs> but the Halsema also offers economical opportunities. A dozen small dealers make money in this village with the passing traffic. More than 50 buses stop here every day. So here we have nuts with the popular adobo flavor. We buy it per kilo in the city and then put it in small bags. This is garlic flavored and this is sweet peanut. Business goes especially well on the public holidays. That's when everyone working in the big cities drives back to their families in the mountains. After taking a short break, Dennis continues to force his bus along the winding road. The Halsema Highway also attracts tourists. Bikers from the capital city appreciate the winding ride on the legendary highway. For a week, this group is traveling the mountains with their historic British military motorcycles. Last night was a trial of courage for the motorcycle club from Manila. They had to endure continuous rainfall with poor visibility for several hundred kilometers. This, this, this road is not a joke. Uh, actually, it is my first time here, and I am lucky enough to have these guys with me. The ride last night was fun. Adrenaline, thrills. You cannot even see the, the road because of the fogs, and it's raining, and Jack we are so very, cold. very cold. <laughs> and it's nice. Yeah. Landslide. Basically, it's, it's dangerous, actually. We're not uh, saying it's a good thing to do. After last night's wild ride, the bikers are taking it easy today on their winding tour, leading ever deeper into the remote mountains of the high plateau. In the meantime, Dennis has already covered half the distance of the Halsema Highway. He has arrived at the Philippine Salad Bowl. This is where all the vegetables for the region and the capital city, Manila, are grown. The Halsima provides the farmers with everything they need for agriculture. Off the highway, there are still almost only wild tracks, though. Romeo Cagayan is a farmer. In order to reach his field, which is three kilometers away, he must endure a good shaking a strain for man and material. When we arrive home after this stretch, we can still feel the road. Your hips are hurting. Your body's tired. This path really wears you down. You should have your wife giving you a massage afterwards. Today, Romeo and his helpers are harvesting radish and cabbage. Afterwards, he has to drive the harvest directly to the central market at the end of the highway. Prices are higher if he sells fresh from the field. His helpers have already started working. There are no reapers. Everything is done by hand. The radish is washed and packaged already on the field. 
The wholesalers expect it that way. Romeo's job as a farmer has changed considerably over the past years. The highway has become much more important for him. I used to only be a farmer. When I bought a truck, I suddenly had two professions, farmer and driver. Because I delivered vegetables for everyone. I have employees that do the planting for me because I'm mostly driving now. Julius Kuryab is a sales representative for a seed company. There is strong competition, and so he visits the farmers in the fields to find out what they need. On these narrow paths, it's much quicker to take the motorbike. This way, he can visit up to half a dozen clients a day. How are you? Hi, I'm Julius from Seedworks. Since you're growing carrots, I brought some seeds for you to try out. This way, Romeo is able to order his seeds right in the middle of his field. It's good for business to come here by motorcycle. And we're used to these kinds of roads. It's normal for us, even if it's just a bumpy track. We've learned to live with it. Romeo and his men must hurry. If they want the goods to be on the market today, they have only a few hours left. If Romeo arrives too late, he has to wait until the next day, a great financial loss, because the price will have gone down. Meanwhile, Dennis is still driving his bus through the salad bowl. He and his passengers have already made it halfway. Time for lunch break. The passengers leave the bus somewhat stiff-legged after the long winding journey. They have 20 minutes to move around and quickly take a bite of something. Dennis has been loyal to the Morningstar restaurant for 25 years now, ever since he started driving the Hasima. The lunch costs 100 pesos, almost two euros. For most people, it's a lot of money and not everyone can afford it. Dennis and his conductor Sandy enjoy free catering. After all, their buses bring customers. We always eat here. We eat quickly so we can move on quickly and get home early. Eat quickly, move on quickly, and drive quickly. They haven't yet made half the journey, and there are still many bends to come. A few kilometers further on. Again and again, severe accidents occur on the highway. Last year, a school bus with 15 students crashed and fell 100 meters into the canyon. 12 students died, the others were badly injured. This exercise is supposed to prepare paramedics for the many accidents. 
All of us are paramedics from the region. We practice for emergencies as realistically as possible. These horrible things happen here, so we practice a lot to learn new techniques and get a feel for the situation and how serious the injuries are. Farmer Romeo's house is in Buguyas, situated directly at the highway. From here, it's not far to the fields, and he can head off straight to the central market. As always, his wife tells him to drive carefully. Too much has happened. And she knows that Romeo is in a hurry to be at the market on time. From Buguyas, which is halfway down the highway, it takes three to four hours to reach the city of Buguyo with its 500,000 inhabitants. Romeo has been driving the highway for more than 20 years, rain or shine. Even a bad typhoon couldn't stop him a couple of years ago. Once he had a brake failure, and he just about managed to save his truck by driving into a wall. Romeo knows the old cars are always good for a surprise. What happened? Broken? No. The filter was uh, filled with uh, dirt, so I must have to repair. Oh, this is a. Uh... We'll fix it there. Up. No. Oh. <laughs> Romeo is not only a farmer and a driver, but also a car mechanic by now. He owns several old trucks, and one of them could always break down. What can you do? You have to watch out for yourself. Even in the middle of the night, do not rely on others when it comes to fixing your own truck. Not such a big deal. The air filter is dirty and Romeo can clean it himself. It doesn't even take half an hour to repair the damage. Things like these happen often here. We're prepared. But only if you fix it immediately, you can save your goods. I need to be at the central market on time, or else my vegetables will go bad. So now, Romeo will drive even faster, in order to not have to queue up until the next morning, and not to have to sleep over at the central market. Everywhere along the highway, the farmers and their families have settled between the canyon and the road. Most of them own only small fields, which are in fact illegal, but the authorities let them be. Three years ago, a typhoon dragged a few houses down into the canyon. In the meantime, the inhabitants have rebuilt them. They want to stay on in spite of the danger, since they have no alternative. Vilma and Caprio Kisman are harvesting. They have grown their sayote fruits directly into the steep slope. The selling of the fruits is their sole income. We've decided to live right at the Hausima because it's more practical. 
That way we can harvest the fruits and bring them straight to the market. They have to carry their meager harvest up the mountain on foot. During the rainy season, they can hardly set foot on their field without risking falling down the wet slope. A sack of these pumpkin-like fruits brings them 300 pesetas, a bit more than five euros. I wish there was somebody there to help us. Then we would immediately leave this place. Because it's really very, very dangerous. But this is how we make a living. We worry a lot about the cars. We try to bring and pick up our children from school. The traffic is scary. The street is really dangerous and there are many accidents. I'm very worried. Even if he's in a great hurry, Romeo stops the truck to visit them. Hi, how are you? Sorry for being so late, but I had a breakdown and had to clean the filter. Let's carry your fruit onto the truck. Romeo knows how hard it is for the family and tries to help them by taking their fruit to the market. It always tends to get foggy in the afternoon. During the day, the tropical sun warms the humid air. It rises. In the afternoon, it condenses to fog in the mountains, and it starts to rain. Within a short period of time, the highway then turns into a dangerously slippery track. Sometimes there is a change in the weather from one mountain to the next. Dennis ended up right in the middle of this dense fog. We know our Halsima. It gets foggy every afternoon. Sometimes it's so bad that you can't see the road anymore. You have to be very careful to stay on the road. Farmer Romeo was lucky. He reached the valley before the fog did. The Halsima is dangerous, but at least it doesn't hurt as much. The bumpy tracks we usually travel hurt so much you can't even sleep at night. The Halsima has been paved almost everywhere now, which makes it a bit more comfortable. In the end, Romeo did make it. He arrived in the city on time. And he catches a stand with a cooperative from his village. It organizes the sale of vegetables for its local farmers. Romeo is allowed to pass the queue, but he too has spent whole nights queuing up. I'm very lucky. I didn't have to queue up and got in straight away. My cabbage will stay fresh. The market is run by the state. Farmers from the whole region sell their products to the salesmen coming from the neighboring cities.
soon, a potential buyer for Romeo's Harvest shows up. Do you like my vegetables? Let's see. How much can you pay? I'll give you 18 per kilo. Come on, a bit more. I could sell it for more, you know? It doesn't work that way, brother. The customer buys the whole load for 18 pesos a kilo, 35 cents if converted to euros. And Romeo has to wrap every single cabbage into newspaper twice and put them into sacks. <laughs> Great. I quickly sold my cabbage for a good price. Now he just needs to get rid of his radish to make this a really good day. Baguio lies at 1,500 meters and is normally seen as a summer resort. But it's a fast-growing city and so traffic is growing too. On some days, the smog and smut make it hard for the people to even breathe. Dennis has been steering his bus along the winding highway for more than eight hours now. I don't mind the driving. Seven to eight hours are normal for me. If you give up too easily, you won't make money and your family stays hungry. The bus terminal in Baguio. This is where passengers from all over the country arrive. Dennis will spend the night here and sleep in his bus. Tomorrow, he'll be back in his living room, the Hasima Highway. Come on, Sandy. Enough for today. Let's thank God for driving well and safe and without an accident.